Good morning. Is my microphone on? Can you hear me now? Good to see you this morning. Today we're going to talk about how to make a big difference. Here's what I want to tell you. There, I hear it now. We try to make it where your ears ring just a little when you leave church. That's the whole goal. You're like, man, that message is just in my head. Um, do you remember when our biggest division as a community was whether the bl dress was blue or green? Do you remember that? So, you know, as we're coming out of the pandemic, I, here's what I think. I honestly think this. The enemy's whole plan in this deal was not about a virus or not virus. People love to say that was Satan or whatever. I don't care about all that. All right. But here's the deal. His goal is always, listen, his goal is always to divide people. So let me just give you some, some examples from the last few years just to mess with you. And some of you are going to get offended. And I like that. So, you know, we started out with gather, don't gather. So there were pastors who came on TV and said, if you don't gather, you're not a good Christian. And then we found out there were pandemics in their church and they wiped out leadership in their church and people died and that even happened in our community. But at the same time, there were other pastors who came out and said, if you do gather, then you're not a good Christian. And I will tell you that as a pastor, I like, there, some of these are people I like and listen to. I'm like, wow, that's really good. And then I heard the one say this and I went, oh no. And then I heard the other that I like say the opposite. And I went, oh no. Because you know what the big deal was? It was about division because what people would do is they would state an argument and then say, I'm superior to you because you think this and I think this, therefore I'm smarter than you. And then we went to mask, no mask. By the way, you are welcome to wear a mask at our church. Nobody will make fun of you. We won't think less of you. We're not better than you because we, you might actually be smarter than us for, not wearing a, for wearing a mask today. But we don't decide that. And if you're wearing a mask today, you can't look at other people and go, well, if you guys were smart like me. By the way, my wife will probably show up and wear a mask just so you know. So, so here's the deal. So we've thought of something else to divide over. And what happens? We become arrogant and think that the way I believe, and then we listen to a guy who failed biology to find out about a virus and say, see that guy? He's a football player, but he, he failed biology, but I'm sure he knows all about this. So I'm going to listen to him. And if you don't listen to him, you're stupid. And you're like, what's the enemy's plan? To divide you based on things, you ready, ready? In the long-term eternity, they don't. I know they matter for now. You want to you know, you save grandma. I get it, okay? We were very careful with my mother. But the truth is, we're dividing over things that make, listen, no eternal difference. I had somebody send me an email a few weeks ago that said, I believe that Putin is correct and he's doing God's will in this world. And I went, uh, no. And she said, we'll agree to disagree. And I said, okay. And we dropped it. I didn't argue with her. I didn't pull out a Bible verse out of context to try to make it seem like I knew what I was talking about. But I, I just like, okay, why? Because I'm more concerned about your eternity than whether or not you catch whatever this year. And so gather, don't gather. Mask, don't mask. There's some people who still don't come to church because they're immune compromised. I don't judge them for coming or not coming. I actually had somebody email me. Their, their son's getting ready to graduate. And they said, but we haven't been to church. We watch online, but we haven't been to church in a while. And I said, well, I said, I'm the Columbia Record Club of pastors. Unless you send me a letter that says I don't go here anymore, you are still a part of the club and I expect those membership fees. <laughs> Sorry, did I say that out loud? That last part, David, that last part should have stayed inside. It came out. So I want you to pay attention this year and in this message, how can I make a big difference? Because here's the deal. The enemy knows, listen, which one of these is more important? Here's what the enemy knows. Some of you feel like this and maybe your gifts are like this. And here's what I know. When I was a kid, we grew up in Miami. Miami has no waves. Did you know that? There's only like one beach in Miami that has any waves, but Miami has no waves. There's no waves almost any time. If you get like a one foot wave, you're like, woo, surf's up, right? So we as kids went to uh, 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 Hutchison Island where there were waves. We didn't know that. And my brother and I were little. I'll tell you how little we were. We blew up one of those two-man boats and we both sat in it. I don't think I can fit in that boat by myself now, right? So we were little kids, but we went to the beach with my brother. And I'll never forget, my older brother was like six foot tall. And we were pushing around the waves and it wasn't really a wavy day. But all of a sudden, we didn't realize there were sets 
And my brother, of course, was always beating us up. You know, that was his thing. And so, so we turn around and my brother is standing here and my younger brother and I are in the raft and we're looking at him and I'll never forget, my brother's coming at us like this. Ugh! But behind him was the biggest wave I've ever seen come out of nowhere. I don't know if it was a rogue wave or if it was always that way, because I was a little kid and had no idea. But I looked up and my brother and I both went, oh, to which my older brother turned around just in time to get smacked in the face. And we all got rolled all the way up onto the beach. And we were little kids, so we didn't get hurt. We thought it was hilarious and went back out and did it again. If I did that today, you'd all be visiting me in the hospital. What were you trying to do, Pastor? I don't know. I thought maybe. Now, what's the difference? Listen. You ready? You, 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 this is water. And maybe this is you with your gifts and your talents and the things that God's given you to do. But when you combine all of those together... As we serve together and love together and encourage together and don't let divisions over dumb things come in and give people grace when they are dumb. We go, okay, because here's the truth. We may all find out a few years from now that whatever we thought was smart wasn't. I mean, don't you look back at high school and go, oh, no. Right? You realize Lincoln's doctors thought that bloodletting was good. Those were the smartest people of his time. We may at some point look back at this time and go, Grandma, why did you do that? We, we're just doing our best. That's all I can tell you, right? But when we come together and don't worry so much about those divisions and we go back to God's word and we say, this is who Jesus is and this is what matters. And I don't care whether you use a mask, don't use a mask, got vaccinated, didn't get vaccinated, got this, didn't get that. Now, you can't wouldn't come to my house. Right? I mean, you get to make your own rules. But I'm not going to divide your faith and say that I'm smarter than you or dumber than you because of what I don't do or do. We've gone from the blue and green dress to dividing over everything and none of it matters. Don't let the media tell you what the most important things of the day is. The most important thing is that Jesus is alive. And when he comes into your life, he changes you. And when he changes you, you want to get with others so that other people can come home to him because what you have is so awesome. And that's the big deal. So if you need to nap, that's kind of the point of this sermon together. Oh, I did want to point this out. I, I, I had a pastor who, when people clapped, stopped church and told everybody they were wrong. And I was at that church and they fought, you ready, over toilet paper in a meeting. If you guys got in a fight over toilet paper today, I would buy you toilet paper. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And, and so people divide over music. You know, I like this song. I don't like this song. I like this music. I didn't like this music. You know, today, and we, we rate people like it's a Yelp review for church every week. We've so missed it because we're so busy trying to make ourselves feel important when the most important you can be is when you combine your gifts with other people and give up your preferences to, to love and care for others, then, then it's a wave. And you become Surfside, right? Surf's up, dude. That's why we're named Surfside. It's a wave of faith together. Each of us in our own is just a little bottle of water. Maybe even some of you are a drop of water. But Jesus even said, if you give a cup of cold water in his name, guess what? It's like you're doing it to him. So, so give the water God's given you and use it as we come together. So today we're going to talk about how to make a big difference. And we have a church full of people who go out of their way for people every week. So thank you guys. So let's talk about that today. Let's look at three things. Number one, value others and notice, not their selfishness, your selfishness. We all can be selfish and self-centered. We all think we're right. Listen, I'm telling you, the lady who told me that Putin's the best thinks she's right. The person who thinks the dress is blue or green thinks they're right. You probably got in a fight with your spouse over something ridiculously dumb. Right? Do nothing, Philippians says, out of selfish ambition. By the way, selfish ambition means you're promoting yourself. You're trying to make yourself look good. By the way, you can serve others selfishly. Because you serve others and you go, okay, now what do I get? Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Now, this is a cool word in the Greek. You know what it means, vain conceit? It means bragging about things that don't matter. I mean, you know, like me beating everybody 
at the golf place the other day. I mean, I would never tell everybody that I whooped all of my children at the golf place on I Drive the other night when they took me out for my, I mean, whooped them. They were, I, I mean, I would never brag about, that's vain conceit, you get it? You're sitting out there going, that's the dumbest thing I've ever, exactly, that's what vain conceit is. And then it continues, rather, in humility, listen, listen, value others. You ever roll your eyes when somebody said something? You know what that is? That's, I don't value what you just said. Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interest. I like this song. I don't like this song. I like this chair. I don't like this chair. I like this. I don't like that. But each of you to the interests of others. So what does that look like? Well, Lydia wanted to go to lunch this week. So I said, Lydia, I'll take you to lunch. She said, I want to go to Sonny's. Now, you got to understand, I don't get to go to Sonny's often. My wife does not eat barbecue. Let's pray for her real quick. Right? <laughs> And so, I don't know what happened. Maybe it's a childhood thing. I, you know, we're working on therapy. But anyway, so, so, so J- Lydia says, Daddy, I want to go to Sonny's. And this is my daughter with Down syndrome, my adult daughter with Down syndrome. I said, great. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm already imagining what I'm ordering. I'm ordering it, and I'm thinking, I'm going to get an extra side today. We're going we're gonna to lose weight later, you know. <laughs> And so I'm thinking about all this stuff, and then we get in the car. I'm so excited. We pull into Sunny's, and there's a line, and she goes, I changed my mind. I want to go to Panda Express. You need to understand, I hate Panda Express. You might love it. It may be your favorite thing, but to me, you might as well feed me cardboard. Now, granted, I still order a meal from Panda Express when we go. I'm not that desperate for lack of food, but... So, of course, I did what every dad does. I said, are you sure? <laughs> yes, I want Panda Express. Are, are you positive that you... And she said, Daddy, I want Panda Express. And I went, okay. It's the longest three-minute drive in the world from wonderful Sunnies to Panda Express. But why did I do that? Because I preferred her... Above me. People quit churches over a song selection. People quit churches over somebody clapping. People quit churches because the pastor didn't hug them this morning or say hi to them. By the way, hi, 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 hi. If you're watching online, hi, 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 right? By the way, I'll give you my cell phone number. You can call me, okay? Unless you're crazy, then you don't get it. All right. First, did I say that out loud too? 1 Corinthians 1.10 says this, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with each other in what you say and that there be no divisions. I mean, it has been public. Pastors criticizing each other for their views on a subject they never studied in seminary. There is no seminarian that has a degree in immunology. And yet they're saying, the Bible says... Let there be no division among you, but you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Now realize, this is Corinth. Corinth made Las Vegas look like a Christian community. It made New Orleans during Mardi Gras look like a sainthood. I mean, Corinth, they were partying. They were having tailgate parties in the parking lot before the Lord's Supper. And Paul has to say, you know, uh, it's probably not good. You probably should take the Lord's Supper in a worthy manner. And not only were they having parties in the parking lot, poor people would come up and go, give me something to eat. And they're like, no, these are our hamburgers. Or in their case, bail burgers, but that's another story. So let's talk about some things we unite on as a church real quick. These are things that bring us together. We believe in scripture. We believe in prayer. We believe in uniting in small groups. Whether it's a group of people studying scripture together, whether you're getting with one other person to talk about your relationship with God, or whether you're on a team that serves other people, the children's ministry, nine kids right now over there this morning, there's folks in there helping and serving, and so we get together, and then finally, reproducing through apprenticing, you know what apprenticing is, anybody who's a plumber knows, or electrician, it's when you work with somebody else and watch what they do to learn, we should, if you're farther along as a Christian in any aspect, you should be teaching somebody else what you know how to do, and then finally, four environments for growth, and we're going to talk about that next week, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, come here, come back. Number two, serve with your gifts. 
Galatians 5, 13 and 14. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. By the way, we think of the flesh like just sin. You know, like sins we see, like, oh, I went there and watched that movie. No, no. Flesh is also, I'm better than you. (laughs) Anytime that you can hear Thurston Howell's voice say what you just said, right? The peasants over there don't understand us folks. You know, anytime that you suddenly think, you see some, somebody say something on Facebook and you think, oh, what an idiot. How dare they not think like I think, right? So that's what it's talking about. You are called to be free, but don't use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Time out. Why does he say serve one another humbly in love? Because here's the deal. Have you ever been to a restaurant that you knew the waiter or waitress did not want to be there? It's a great feeling, isn't it? What do you want? Uh, Food? All right, hurry up. I mean, can you imagine? And yet, I've been to churches where the people in the church, when they helped you with something, it was like they were doing you a huge favor. Boy, you're glad I'm here today, aren't you? serve one another humbly in love. And here's the thing about Christians. Let me, let me tell you. When you become a Christian, you put on a mom's little angel. You put on your baby bib, right? And you get fed. Tell me about Jesus. Tell me about God's love. And here's what I'll tell you. Most believers never take this off. They remain baby Christian. You can remain a baby Christian. Feed me, me, me. Babies are all about themselves, right? You don't give them what they want. I don't know if you've seen those, those, uh, those things on Facebook where, you know, they, the kid's crying over something, you know, refuse to give them poison, you know, whatever it is. This, is. this is so many Christians. And what do we need to do instead? Jesus showed us. What do we do? We, we need to go from bibs. To aprons. What's an apron? How can I serve you? See, a bib is all about me, me, me. But what's an apron? Apron's about you, you, you. How do I know that? Look at these verses. Romans 7, 4. So you, my brothers and sisters, died to the law through the body of Christ. Why? So you might belong to one another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. Peter, uh, 1 Peter 3, 8. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, Love one another and be compassionate. And what's the next word there? Humble. I think the dress is blue. I think the dress is green. I think you're both stupid. Okay, so, all right. Romans 12. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members don't all have the same function, so in Christ, though we are many, we form one wave, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts. That's where we get the word charismatic. We have different gifts according to the grace given each of us. So some of you are really good. You, you are encouraging to people. Some of you work well with your hands. Some of you have the gift where you can just go talk to people and you help them to be encouraged and blessed. Other of you have gifts of service where you help people with a thousand different ways. And here's the deal. You're all important. The pastor is not... Listen, I'm not a big bottle of water and you're a little bottle of water. We're all little bottles of water. The pastor gets to be a little bottle of water up front, but it's no more important than Twyla, who made sure the pastor had coffee this morning. Three pots already today. I don't know what's wrong with you people, but drink as much as you want. and Give Rick an extra cup. He's a drummer. I'll never forget years ago going to youth camp, and I got, as a youth pastor, I got caught up in something. And this camp was packed. I mean packed. There was not a seat to be found in the camp. So I was late coming to the meeting, and I just knew, well, I'm going to go check on my students, and then I'm going to go stand in the back. So I came walking in to check on my students, and when I looked towards my students, the students said, Eric, Eric, we saved your seat. We saved your seat. See, we think it's about something big. We think it's about, oh, i got to be up front, or i got to play an instrument, or i got to do... Listen. It's about going out of your way to look for the needs of others and say, God, show me how I can be a part of meeting that need. Don't just, don't just, don't just say, feed me and be a big old ugly plant, right? Start to put on that apron and serve other people and say, hey, 
God, what do you want me to do? We'll talk more about that next week. Number trace. Forgive and put on love. Have you ever met a bitter Christian? Boy, that's a joy. I've been a pastor a long time. I was a youth pastor before that. It's been a long time. I was young. I mean, I, I can tell you stories of the dumb stuff I did. Pools of pudding with worms in it. Gummy worms. And then the kids went into the church with the pudding on them and walked through the church building. I got in a little trouble for that one. <laughs> pudding. Gallons of pudding. Not to mention what the parking lot smelled like a week later. That's another story. But I also have been a Christian long enough and a pastor long enough to be around people who worried about the most petty things on earth. And who got hurt at one time and have still not gotten over it. If you hang around Christians, if you hang around me, let's just be real specific. You hang around me long enough, at some point you're going to go, that was offensive. Actually, you might have already done that today. I don't know. Right? That was offensive. Or, hey, you hang around people. Guess what? You got to forgive them. See, we live in a world that during the pandemic, we divided each other and divided each other and divided each other. And the enemy goes, ha, ha, ha. And I don't care if you get together in person, online, on the phone, text each other, but get together, unite. Why? Because a wave cannot form as long as you're in your cubicle. And if you're mad at everybody all the time, you know what you're going to think of? Yourself. Babies only think of themselves. When we learn to serve others. Jesus serves the disciples. He washes their feet. By the way, I would have skipped Judas. I'm just saying that's how I am. I'm like, wash your feet, wash your feet. Judas, okay, now, right? And then he prays for all of us. Listen to this. John 17, 20 to 23. My prayer is not for them alone. Talking about the disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's us. Okay, so this prayer is for you and for me. So here it is. Here's what he prays. What's the most important thing Jesus can pray? Here it is. That all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. That's a pretty close relationship, right? May they also be in us so the world may believe that you sent me. I've given them the glory you gave me. Did you hear that? That means that Jesus prayed that you and I, people would see Jesus in us. Is that what's happening with the church? More importantly, is that what's happening at your workplace, in your house? I, I don't want to say this one. When you drive, if you've got a Jesus bumper sticker, some of you need to take that off your car. Actually, it would be better just to drive like Jesus. I don't know how Jesus drives. Maybe he just divides the water and drives as fast as he wants. I'm not, okay, sorry. I've given you the glory you gave me so they may be one as we are in. I in them and you in me. So they may be brought, listen, to complete unity, a huge wave. The world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you've loved me. You know what Jesus prayed? Help them to know that they are loved as much as Jesus is loved. Remember when Jesus got baptized, he came out of the water, and God says, this is my son, in whom I'm a little pleased. No, he said, in whom I'm well pleased. And some of you never heard that at home. And yet God says that to you. And you say, but God, why are you well pleased? Have you seen my life? And God's like, no, no, no. I see Jesus when I see you. When you surrender your life to Christ, I give you his righteousness. So that when I see you, I go, I'm well pleased. And you're like, yeah, but yesterday. And he's like, what are you talking about? Didn't you confess that already? I forgot all about East, West. Hello? Some of you need today to hear that God say he's well pleased. Because you're afraid to use your gifts because you think, who am I? That God would use me. And I tell people all the time, if you come here to church, you see me up here, and then you go, man, if God can use him. Jennifer's known me long enough to go, it's absolutely true. My sister will tell you the same thing. My sister Kelly came to church one time. She goes, I know it's got to be God. And I go, what do you mean? She goes, because I know you. Thanks. But it's true. Therefore, as God's chosen people, does that sound like he hates your guts? Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with 
compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. By the way, this word for bear doesn't mean put up with. You translate it that way because you put up with a lot of people, but that's what it means. This means to lift up each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against somebody, forgive them as the Lord forgave you. And after all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. I want to tell you something really simple as I end this service. Years ago, I went through the hardest time of my life. And I began to pray, God, what do you want me to do? God, I'm willing to step away from everything and everyone. I, I, I'll go be a monk. I'm not even Catholic, but I'll go be a monk. I'll go retreat to the middle of nowhere. I'll teach school and, and not do anything anymore. I'll, I'll leave ministry. And out of nowhere, Harold Brantley called me and said, Hey, Eric, this is my Harold Brantley impression, by the way. Eric, let's go to lunch. I said, what? He said, I want to buy you lunch. I've never said no. <laughs> so we go to lunch, and as we're going to lunch, Harold's talking to me. He goes, now, Eric, were you saying you want to leave ministry? Yes. Let me ask you something. Did God, have you done something where you should leave ministry? No, I don't think so. This is what the Bible says. We went through that. He said, all right. Did God tell you to leave ministry? No. Well, then quit listening to other people and you do what God's told you to do. Now, listen. That was a five-minute conversation over 10 years ago. Or about, yeah, over 10 years ago. And I still remember it. Not only do I remember the conversation, I remember how it made me feel like someone came and gave me a God hug and said, it's going to be okay. Listen. I don't know what part of your life you're going through right now. But we all, we all, all of us, need that person who can bring a little bit of God water with them and say, I just want you to know you're loved and cared about. I just want you to know you matter. I want to use my gifts to be a blessing in this way. And this is what I know how to do. I know how to make coffee. I know how to help children. I know how to run sound. I don't know how to run sound, but I'll, help, I'll learn. You can teach me. I know how to do this. God, use what you've given me to make a huge wave. Because you know what when it happens when a big wave happens? You get knocked down. And if you're a kid, you have a blast. And we live in a country that needs a wave of God's presence more than we need anything else. More than we need political change. We need a revival. And that can only happen. When you allow God to use your cup of water and combine it with others to form a wave. I'm not so worried about where you're at, where you're not at. My biggest concern is, have you ever given your life to Jesus Christ? John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes, that's the word for faith, whoever puts their faith in him. Will not perish. It won't die. When you die and close your eyes here, your eyes will open in heaven. But have eternal life. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ, you can do that today. If you're watching online, you can send me a note. If you're here, I'll talk to you after the service. Love you today before you leave to know I've given my life to Christ. And if you're a Christian and you've been worried about everything else in the world, this or that, whatever the world is telling you is important, hey, I don't care if you're on Will Smith or Chris Rock's team. I don't care if you're on the mask, no mask. The, the, the Fauci or the DeSantis. I could care less. I just want you to be on Jesus' team. Because it's more important that we're on his side than any of these other sides. So lay down your baby bib that says, my rights, my whatever, me, my. And say, God, how can I serve you? What do you want me to do? So if you're a Christian, that's my challenge to you. Normally, we have our time of offering here. Um, we're not passing the offering plate right now. We will be soon. But you can give on the way out. If you're watching online, you can give online. We're going to pray and have a great song to close our service. Would you join me? Father, thank you for these moments together. Thank you for your word, your strength, your power, your love. Unite us. That can only happen by your spirit, Lord. We can't do that on our own. And may we unite in such a way that it creates a wave of revival in our church and in our community. Lord, we love you. Lord, help us to put aside petty things and serve one another humbly in love.
In Jesus' name, amen.